since we've seen our pastor last <clears throat> and his family, <clears throat> he's put about 5,000 miles on that body of his. <laughs> a lot of, did you sleep in the plane last night? Can you do that? Uh, I slept four hours because I had three brothers that tortured me for years, so I learned to sleep anywhere. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of brothers who are young, we have kids, and we can dismiss them to go with their teachers. If you're the man. <laughs> kids, go and have a fantastic time with your teachers. Can we bless our kids? <clears throat> right? said be ready in season and out of season and uh, so I'm going to be in season I guess for this morning I always enjoy being able to break open the word of God and share whatever he's got for us usually it's a, quite a surprise to me somebody said something like uh, I hope it'll be good this morning and I said I do too <laughs> <laughs> never know how this stuff is going to work out, you know. <clears throat> I always have notes. I call them starters. God fills in the blanks and does what God wants to do when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. So we'll get started and see what God's got for us. We're not going to put scripture up there today. If you have to have a Bible with you, and you want to turn to Psalm 100, we're going to read verses 1 through 5. My voice is a little raspy. That's none of my business. God said he's in charge. So let him be in charge. Amen? Amen. amen. Now you know me. I've done it a couple of times right now. And amen really helps. So if, in, if, if anywhere in this thing I have to say amen, I expect you to say amen. amen. Hey, you did good the first time. That's good. Preacher shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> this preacher do so anyway we'll see what God's got for us let's read this to you. make a joyful shout to the Lord all you lands now that's talking about everybody to make a joyful shout to the Lord now see I I just might ask for an amen the scripture says amen no make a joyful <laughs> shout a shout like yes that last G right so it says make a joyful shout to the Lord everybody Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. We've done that. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. In other words, he's saying God is in charge. Ain't that good to know? He goes on to say, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. The title given for this psalm in my Bible is, Enter His Gates with Thanksgiving, which is repeated in verse 4. It's important at this time of the year. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and be thankful to the Lord God and bless his name for the Lord is good. Amen. Isn't that great? What a great scripture to start a, a thing like this. If you didn't guess it already, today we're going to talk about Thanksgiving. Oh, it's the Thanksgiving holiday. What a coincidence. That thought worked out pretty good. <laughs> By the way, I like Thanksgiving. It's a holiday that just sounds good. Thanks. Sounds good. Just the, the word all by itself. <coughs> Thanks. But then we add the word giving. Thanks for giving. Apparently someone gave something. Somebody said thanks. That's good. Another neat thing about this holiday in America, uh, dedicated and set aside, when an entire nation takes a time out just to say thank you. 
We tie this holiday then, after we say thank you, we tie this holiday into food. Now we're on my subject. No. But lots of good food, not just any kind of food, no, not a hamburger this time or tomato soup with a chilled uh, grilled cheese or nothing. No, 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 no. This is a lot of good food and we call eating this food, we're eating our Thanksgiving feast. dinner. What'd you say? Feast. What? Feast. 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 Feast is okay. We always call it Thanksgiving dinner. People from way over there, they'll learn after they hear a little longer. So Oregon, Oregon people take a little while to catch up. And that's it. Well, traditionally, there is no other dinner like a Thanksgiving dinner. And you all are getting ready for it, I'm sure. Family members travel from all over to have this Thanksgiving dinner. This year is kind of special for Sharon and me because we have four sons. One lives in L.A., one in Vegas, Asheville, North Carolina, and Greensboro, North Carolina, with their kids, and they're all coming to our house for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, two of them rented a five-bedroom home over in some little city away from here, and most of them are going to be over there, but they're all going to be home, Saturday or Friday. They're all going to be in our little place. So if you see, you know, a bunch of stuff going on, uh, no, I'm talking for the people who live in the park. <laughs> it's going to be busy in the park. <laughs> you know, really, we're, we're told that Thanksgiving is the most traveled holiday in America. In fact, it's called the family holiday. I heard recently there could be up to 50 million people on the roads this year. Now, I'm not sure where all that food idea came from. Some say it had something to do with the pilgrims and the Indians kind of getting together. Uh, if I know for sure, though, I'd like to shake their hand and say, thank you, because <laughs> I like Thanksgiving. You know what, when you think about it, it just plain feels good to say thank you. Maybe we ought to practice saying thank you even more. Why don't we just for a minute have each of us turn to somebody next to us and say thanks. 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 You know, I've had people say, wait, wait, preacher, what, what, what are we giving thanks for? And I always said, it doesn't make a difference what you're giving thanks, you just say thanks. By the way, it was kind of interesting that uh, when you were saying thank you, you all were smiling. You can't say it without smiling. You're already smiling, thinking about it. Look at your, look at your faces. Look at your neighbor. We're all smiling. She's trying not to smile. <laughs> Maybe this feeling good about saying thank you is what led the Holy Spirit to have the Apostle Paul say this to the Christian believers in the young church of God in Thessalonians. In Thessalonians, at chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Here's what he said, three little verses. He said, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Mm -hmm. Three little verses, 21 words is all, filled with giving thanks. Isn't that amazing? Also notice that these three verses conclude by saying in verse 19, do not quench the spirit. Five power-packed words. Do not quench the spirit. So if you don't have a spirit of, of a thankful heart, yeah. apparently we can quench or stifle the Holy Spirit, what he wants done. Now, if we could do that without having a thankful heart, that's huge, folks. Because nobody wants to quench the spirit of God. And then to the believers in the young church of God. And now, by the way, I keep saying to the young church of God, is it because that's the only church mentioned in the, young, in, in the New Testament. Church of Christ one time, that was an ownership thing. 
Church of God the other 13 times had to do with ownership. I mean, that's who we are in Christ. Anyway, uh, he said this to that church over in, in Ephesians. He said, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So catch this. I say catch this because I think more scriptural truth is caught than taught. The Holy Spirit says, that's you, that's you. We catch what the Holy Spirit wants us to learn. So anyway, 1 Thessalonians 5, this is important. We're told, in everything, give thanks. In Ephesians 5, we're told, give thanks always for all things. Makes, yes, I've heard people say, well, we ought to give thanks in all things, but not for all things. Scripture says you've got to give thanks in both of them. Coming or going, good or bad, is saying always give thanks. Have a thankful spirit in you. In all situations, for all situations. Now, we're to do this to have this thankful spirit in us because Romans 8, 38 says, because we know that all things work together for good. That's the promise. The condition is to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So we read it together. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We want to have a thankful heart so good things can happen according to God. So be thanksgiving. Give God thanks for and in all things. Give your thanks, he says, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. He says, do it in the name of Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Would you say that with me? Thank, thank you, Jesus. That's kind of a holy feeling, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 5, 19 and 20 began in verse 17, actually, by saying this, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is, which is what? To be thankful for, and in all things, to be full of thanks. That's what the will of God is for us, to be that way. Remember what Paul told the Thessalonian believers, what the will of God is for them and their walk with God? Very quickly, he told them, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in you through Christ Jesus our Lord, to rejoice and pray and give thanks. What better time than Thanksgiving time, right? Thanksgiving time, of course, should be 365 days out of the year. But we pick a little time now to do it. That's all right. That's okay. To rejoice and pray and give thanks. Folks, these are good things to do. And these are God's will for your life. In fact, <clears throat> when you are doing good things like this, rejoicing and praying and giving thanks, that this is the spirit that God has developed in your life, that's a healthy way to live. Not just spiritually, but physically as well, to be happy, joyful people. It's interesting to note that to the believers in Corinth, the Apostle Paul commended them when he said, 1 Corinthians 14, 17, you indeed give thanks well. You're good at giving thanks. Some people aren't. Some people aren't. <clears throat> When I was in Gulf Coast Bible College in Houston, Texas, I traveled in the college quartet for several years. And when we would get done singing some places, churches, people would come up and say, thank you, that was good. Well, I didn't know how to react in those days. I didn't know what to say. And so they would say, thank you. And I'd kind of squirm a little bit and say, you know, well, praise the Lord or glory to God. Or, you know, I didn't know what to do. I just mumbled some little embarrassed remark. And then somebody told me that when someone says to you, thanks, that was good, just say back to them, thank you. It's okay to do that. But I had to learn how to do that. We learn how to say thanks and we learn how to say thank you. Well, we learn by doing 
And so we're going to do this this morning. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to split the church up that half and that half. And what we're going to do is this half is going to say to that half, this is Thanksgiving season, right? Okay. You're all going to say, thanks. And you're all going to say, thank you. <laughs> okay. okay, we're going to learn how to give thanks and how to take thanks. Okay, well, you ready for that? And then we'll reverse it and do it the other way. Now, when I say you all are going to say, thanks, you're not going to say, thanks. <laughs> and you're not going to say, yeah, thank you, thank you. It's not going to work that way. No, no. The Word of God says we're going to do it the, the Bible way. Amen? Amen. Okay, I already said thanks to them. Okay, here we go. Thanks. And you're all going to say, thank you. And you're smiling and laughing again. Isn't that great? Now, you're all going to say, thanks. Oh, wait, give me a minute. Come on. <laughs> Man, she's ready to go. She's ready to go. I'm, I'm leading this choir, you know. <laughs> okay, you ready to say thanks to them? Okay, here we go. Thanks. Thank you. Give yourself a hand. That was really, really good. Uh, <clears throat> just a sidebar for just a second. After our quartet, when I was singing in there with the college quartet, <clears throat> After we'd fin finished a concert at a church, and folks would come up and say, thank you. I wasn't sure if they were saying, thank you for singing or thank you for getting done. I mean, I wasn't really <laughs> sure at the time. It's kind of like when this, this message is over today, someone might come up and say, thank you. And I won't know if you mean thanks for preaching or fine, thanks for finally getting done. You know, it's going to be one of the two. But anyway... Thanksgiving is a great time of the year. <clears throat> I'm thankful today that we have the freedom to gather together like this, to worship God in this church fellowship, folks, where we feel loved and needed. It's a wonderful thing. I'm thankful for the values of eternity that help keep our celebration of Thanksgiving in perspective <laughs> here and now, to give thanks to God and his great love for us. And thanks to his son, Jesus, who on Calvary's cross took our sins upon himself. Imagine that. And when he did that, he opened the doorway of salvation so we could be back to God in right relationship with him again. I'm thankful for these things. Are you thankful for those kind of things today? Amen. 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 Yeah. Why don't we just give God a big hand clap and tell him thanks? Let's say thanks. Just tell him thanks. 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 Wait, wait a minute. Wait, did, did you hear? I think I heard God say, Thank you. That's the God we serve. Wow. Well, the Bible is filled with scripture that encourages us to be thankful, to read. <clears throat> full of thanks, bubbling up from the inside out kind of thanks, because it's a great way to live. I'm thankful for everything we have at this time of the season. We've got friends and family and turkey and dressing and cranberry sauce and pecan pie, my favorite pie. We got all that stuff. Good times, good feeling to be thankful for. We encourage you, church, this year to Make this the greatest Thanksgiving you've ever had. Now, having said that, I know that some of you have had loss this year. And there may be an empty chair at the table. But I remind you that you haven't lost Jesus. Hang on to Jesus. Because Jesus is hanging on to you. Thank you, Jesus, for that. On the other hand, this Thanksgiving, for someone, maybe life just hasn't worked out like you thought it would. You know you need the life of Jesus in you, but you put him off. You said, God, I'm going to work things out my way. I'm going to live the way I want to live. I'm going to do things on my time. But the truth is, and God knows, things in your life are not working out, and you know it. 
This is exactly why Jesus said of himself, I am the way that you should go. And I am the truth that you should know. And I am the life that you are really looking for down deep inside. Perhaps you're making the discovery I made a long time ago. It dawned on me, an old drunk. I wasn't old, but I was young, but I was been a drunk a long time. But I felt like I was wasting my life. Something wasn't working. And I got to thinking, you know, there's got to be more to this life I'm living than this life I'm living. You ever feel like that? Any time in your life? And it's not settled yet? Sometimes you just, you just feel like there's got to be more to the life that you're living than the life you're living. You need the power of God in your life, and you know it. But Jesus said nobody can come to God the Father except going through him. But Jesus said, I'm the one who gave up my home and glory. And I'm the one who took on the form of man so I would know what you all are going through. I'm the one who knows how to get out of a hopeless and helpless situation. I'm the one who hung on the cross and took your sin and guilt onto myself as your substitute. He did that for us. Thank you, Lord. I'm the one who died and was put in a tomb. I'm the one who rose from the dead so I can give others new life, eternal life with God the Father. You want something to be really thankful for this year? And if this is where you are with the Lord, something's missing and you know it. And only God can fill it and you know it. But you've been putting it off. But if you want something to be really thankful for this Thanksgiving, come to Jesus. Put aside your pride. Humble yourself before him. To do that, he said, he will raise you up into the overcomer's life. Isn't that something? He said, old things <clears throat> that hold you down and wear you out, they'll pass away. And all things that lift you up will become new. Whoa. Hallelujah. You'll become a child of God, <clears throat> part of a spiritual family of God, Jesus as your Savior, God as your Father, and heaven as your home. It'll be kind of like being born again. We can be born again. Someone may be thinking, preacher, this is what I need. I really want this. But how do I get it? What do I do? Well, God's word says if you'll confess your sin <clears throat> of living your way instead of God's way, God will forgive you and cleanse you from all of the junk of your past. And you can start living God's way. <clears throat> I didn't become a Christian for quite a while. I started going to church to meet Sharon. That's the only reason I went to church. <laughs> I'm an Easter Christmas thing with my mom, to, you know, but her mom and my mom were praying. It's quite a story. And anyway, I ended up going to church to meet her. I knew she'd fall head over heels in love with me. And of course she did. We've been, we've been married 60 years now. You know. I had a little uh, pride I had to get rid of, by the way, if you had to But I didn't get saved for quite a while, and, and the pastor would say, you know, if, the men, if you need the Lord today, you need to come to him. We don't have any hope of tomorrow. We've heard that. But um, I didn't want to go because I said, if you confess your sins, 1 John 1, 9 said, if you confess your sins, God, and I, that's a plural word, and I thought, boy, i got to start making a list of this. So when I get ready to go to the altar, I'll know what it is. And then I thought, what if I forget something? And then later on, God said, I know what you said, but you didn't tell me that. Now we're going to deal with that. And then I realized what sin was. I asked the Lord one day, tell me what sin is. It can't be all those things. It's got to be something more than just all those things. And he said, you know, sin really is when you think that you know more about life and living than God does. And you've chosen to go your way instead of God's way. That's what sin is. That's the separation. We separate ourselves from God. Oh, we know about God, heard about him, maybe been in Sunday school for a long time, but we don't serve God. 
Maybe we did, but we've gotten away. We've heard other things. You need to come back to the Lord, and you know it. And Thanksgiving is a great time to do it. That's the point. What a time to be thankful for. When did you come back to the Lord? When did you get saved? Thanksgiving. 20 or 19, whatever it is, 2019. I know when it was. It was Thanksgiving. So when you do that, not only, and this, this was so good for me because I, I had a junk, a lot of junk in my past. Not only will God forgive you, but he'll cleanse you from all of the junk of your past. Whew. Then I found out he'll bear it in the depths of the sea. Wow. As far as the east is from the west. I'll, somebody said, you know, later on, if you say, after you become a Christian, you say, Lord, you know, uh, I got thinking about it. I'm sorry about that thing that I did. And God will say, sorry, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. He'll forget them. Very, isn't that great? What a great way to live. To be a Christian with a God like that. With the Jesus who paved the way for us to get back with God. Wow. Well, this can be a Thanksgiving you'll never forget. So I encourage you. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. You're good. You're good. You're good. What we're going to do is we're going to stand and sing just a little chorus of thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. It'll be on the board. While we're singing that, would you consider, if you're here today, you got an emptiness in there, and Christ can fill it. And you'd like to come forward and stand with Pastor Josh and me, and we'll have prayer where they get it settled on Thanksgiving season. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank